this is for all the young writers out there and just how hard writing is it's so it takes forever so down here do you see this well there's zoe there's a lot of art that's really based on zoe right zoe uh right right sweetie yeah tired bored um and this is uh, a bunch of beginner scripts my drafts that I would, you know, make notes on. And so that, I'm sure that looks like a lot, but that is probably just four or six months worth of, of the scripts. And then it, it gets up to the top and then I take the whole thing and then put it in the recycling bin. But so that, that just gives you an idea of like so much work. Roll sound. Sounds good. Fiddle sticks. Ready and action. I'm playing Oliver, and Oliver is Mike Mills, and Mike Mills is our director. So I'm playing our director, which is a first for me. It's very interesting. And I got access, direct access to um, backstory and research on set because I can turn to him and go, Mike, how did you feel when this happened? And he goes, oh, I felt a bit like that. And I'm like, Mike, thanks. So you and when you're looking at him, so maybe we go, this is pretty amazing. And the goal of this whole thing was not just to make like a memoir, but to make a story. And it's really a story about love. And I picked the parts of my experiences I had with my dad that related to a story about love. And with Ewan, it was never the goal to be me, to mimic me, but to take Oliver's emotions, to take Oliver's experience and turn it into a thing that could communicate with people, with strangers. And Ewan was so good at falling into that, those feelings and taking them really to heart and, and bringing them to life. But when I see it, I never think like, oh, that's Mike. I think, oh, that's Ewan doing such a great job being Oliver. And that's Ewan's body and soul and decisions that aren't totally mine, you know? And the more they aren't mine, almost the happier I am. Because I feel like, oh, now it's a story walking on its own legs in its own life. Would you like to dance? <laughs> How about real straight? Just like... Straight. Like, would you like to dance? Or yeah, like... Uh, you don't you like smile, you're not charming or anything. You're just okay. like... You just can... Would you like to dance? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Working with Melanie and Ewan, it was so amazing how they, they're both such intuitive actors. They really trust their intu intuition. They're so deep about it. Uh, and they really inspire that in each other. So working with them was really just a matter of like encouraging, or encouraging that in them and, and creating this sense of like surprise or anything could happen on the set. And they both sort of really turned on um, to that kind of environment. It was just sort of amazing to watch him do it. Crazy thing about Melanie is that she's actually a writer-director, you know, and she's a musician. She's very intelligent, but then she really lets her, her, her intuition go. She trusts her intuition more than anything. So she's this kind of radical dichotomy between very analytic but then once the camera's on, she's just free. She's on her river. And it's really beautiful to watch. And you never know quite what's going to happen next with her. I heard about a lot of big American projects. And, uh, and after the Tarantino experience, I was like, oh my god, what am I going to do now? It's going to be hard to find the right script and the right American project. We're going to be fun and, and good. So I was thinking, yeah, it's, it's exactly what I just want to do, like a, a little movie and, uh, and going fast and no thinking, no pressure, just fun, act, and this is the perfect shooting for that.
I think with you and we are so like respectful of each other like I just love working with you you know like so it's just like it's great because it's always about generosity when you just met an actor and it's working so well you just want to do things all the time and and you have great crew because honestly the DP is amazing everybody are so cool so cool it's very important because we just spend we just spend like four days in a little bedroom all the time in a bed you know yeah. so it's almost like sometimes it's just not a movie anymore it's a little bit like weird sometimes but uh yeah i think we have fun and we just love being here together I, can i put the lens back in the camera Maybe over. i think the thing about mm -hmm. casper that i love is that he was a childhood actor and that he really comes to the scenes with a lot of emotion he's like a very emotional dp you don't have that a lot so like that was just a fun thing to be around his connection was so to like the energy of the actors but then he's also so uh, technically amazing. He, we lived with so uh, little equipment. It was one Kino and one uh, Source 4 was mostly how we lit it. We didn't have uh, a generator for like 25 of our 30 days. And Casper could work with those limitations so beautifully. And I think it's lit in such an exquisite way and such a uh, very precise way. I need to see that actually these are this is what I had on the day of the shooting so in preparing I would try to remember some things to say to the actors or verbs or or <laughs> sweaty that's funny mm -hmm. things just remember to hopefully remember as you're shooting because when you're shooting it's such a blur it's such a it happens so fast you know it's so easy to miss stuff so I would look at this before before we shot each scene <laughs> for the the dad part of the story I um, the past we did all uh, lock off and tracking shots that were very controlled and then the present was all handheld and very much in the round because memories you kind of can't look around in your memories so it's much more graphic and iconic so the past I storyboarded the whole thing which I don't I didn't do with thumb circle I don't normally do I like to be more free but um in this case, it did. Keep going. I just want to untie this one off here. <laughs> yeah, keep going. Okay, so Shane, you stay there. Loomer, keep coming in. Very yeah, good. He's turned out to be so easy to work with. And the beauty of it is that what, what makes him a, a terrific director, and I'm sure that he will grow into even more a terrific director because he's so young, I hate him. But he knows exactly what he wants. And he's like the old guys that Merciful used to come to the set, having already cut the picture in their minds, so we didn't waste anybody's time. They came on set and knew exactly where they were going to edit. And uh, he, he, he's the same. It's a, I tell you, it's a relief to work with somebody like Mike Mills. He's both very, very of the times and he's also wonderfully old-fashioned. Here we go. Background action. Well, ready and action. These guys are, like, the crowd is dispersed, too. You know, like, our hallway got flat. So make sure, let's reset, make sure our hallway's nice and long. I'm playing a character whose name is Andy. He's Hal's boyfriend. Hal is a little bit older than Andy, maybe, like, 40 years older. Uh, Hale's been played by uh, Christopher Plummer. Uh, so, uh, 
Chris and I are playing lovers. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> All these great guys with these lovely actors come in to play house friends as gay friends, this band of, you know, 50 plus gay men. And they, are, they were just wonderful, to, they were fantastic. And there was a really nice spirit between all of them. They all, it was quite unusual to see all these, this kind of emotional openness and support from all these men. It was, it's, it's, it's so lovely. There's something really special about everybody. There's, there hasn't been a bad apple, you know? And we haven't talked about my little friend, Arthur, oh, you know, Cosmo, Cosmo. About who, who I probably have more screen time with than, than any other actor in the movie. So what's it like to work is with Is my little dog? Jack Russell Cosmo, who I have to say goodbye to on Friday and I can't stand it. Oh, I can't stand it. He's so gorgeous. I love, I love working with him a great deal. He's lovely. Jen, this is the shot. Watch me pick up this pattern where when we do, Mr. When we do the, the symbols on yours, <laughs> yeah. like he's always doing something wrong, but when it comes to his, he's like perfect. Is that yeah. yeah, what is that? <laughs> He's a very generous actor, actually. Yeah. Yeah. See Arthur in. Arthur on set, everybody. Watch your feet. Hey! Hello. You changed. Good to see you. How are you? Good. Great to see you. I'm great. He's been wonderful. I heard. Yeah. When I saw Mike with the dog, it wasn't so much the dog with Mike, but Mike with the dog, and how much um, you could see how much he is a dog lover and how much this, this dog was going to be meaningful to the movie and to, to him. And, um, and that was touching because, you know, some, sometimes it could be more of a pops, the animal, it, oh, it's not there. And, but he was, you know, letting the dog kissing and that just totally really connected. And he's a love bug. I mean, this dog just will jump on people and hug and kiss. And, and he matches the sensibility that both Mike and Ewan have. And, and to me, it's, that's where they found each other so well. This is just uh, the, the perfect job for him because he's basically, you know, hanging out with a great guy all day, and uh, and I'm sure it'll show. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, the thing that's amazing about Matilda is that she doesn't see the dog as like doing a series of tricks or behaviors. She sees the dog as a real character in the film, and she loved the story. She had like a very deep, um, um, very personal reaction to the story. And it was lovely to be with a trainer that's like that. It's not a trainer at all. It's just sort of like the dog companion, dog, dog roommate that brings the dog to the set and makes it part of the life of the set. Okay. Okay. He's absolutely delightful to work for with, with uh, Mike and. Um, I'm having a better time than I've had for years and years and years in a movie because he's so amazing to work with. And the fact that it's his story just makes it more um, special and important because it's because I think it's a really beautiful story and a really important story. And um, it's his story, so it makes it very... Everything that happens in front of the camera is very real and uh, there's a great deal of respect that I have for the work because it's, because it's his story, you know?